Hello, welcome back to Vinyl Show and Tell. Hope we're all doing okay. Uh, just a quick intro on this one. Um, I'm doing something totally different today. Uh, this video will not feature any records at all. Um, I've decided to just do a little tour of my um, hi-fis, my hi-fi equipment and my turntables. Um, this is always something I fancy doing um, right when I started making videos, actually, because I, I have got an interest in hi-fi as well as records. I mean, it is important to, you know, these things go hand in hand, really, don't they? Um, and I have had a few comments on previous videos um, expressing an interest in showing what I've got, because when I when I film in the man cave um, with my kind of, you know, the majority of the collection in the background, um, a couple of um, some of the equipment can be seen. So I thought I would just do a little tour, explain what I've got, explain what I like about it. Um, one thing I shan't be going into is technical specifications of any of the equipment. Um, quite frankly, when it comes to technical specifications, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm very, very much aware of makes and models of things made, you know, in the past and what's out there at the moment and what price ranges are, what I can afford, what I can't, what sounds good. Um, but when it comes to actual technical specifications, it's not really something I look into. Um, it, it, everything everything I show, if you want technical spec, it is available online. So um, obviously, if you are interested, have a little look. But what I'll do is we will switch over, um, start in the man cave, and I'll show you what I've got. So over we go. Hi, so you join me in the man cave. So let's kick off. So the first of two record decks. Um, this is the main one, my pride and joy. It is a Thorin's TD160 Super. You have to bear with me because I'm filming this on my phone. So um, the focus may go in and out a little bit, but uh, I'll do my best. Um, I've had this one for many years. Oh, man alive. So you join me in the man cave uh, for um, a look and we're going to start with the turntables. So here we are, we'll start with the main one. Uh, this is a Thorin's TD160 Super. There it is, very much my pride and joy. Very, very privy to have this. Um, I've had, I've owned this about 17 years now. This was actually, this used to belong to my uncle. Um, who sold it to um, when he actually sold it to my dad who then gifted it to me for a birthday gift um, for just 150 pounds which is uh, an absolute steal considering what these ones can go for um, it's absolutely solid it's on a suspended chassis um, built like a tank it is effectively a reinforced version of the Thorin's TD160 range um, yeah absolutely absolutely beautiful Butte, very privy to own it. Um, it is coupled with a Riga RB300 tone arm. Now, when I've seen when I've seen this on the internet, sort of in you know Google galleries and things like that, these decks normally come with an SME arm, but this is what came with the deck at the time, so I'm not going to change it. It is, of course, very good quality and sounds great. Riga, you know. I'm sure everyone knows Riga. They are a quality project, you know, a quality brand. And my cartridge of choice is a Gold Ring G1042. Um, this is a very, very recent upgrade. I was running a Gold Ring G1006, um, which absolutely great, brilliant, really loved it. But I fancied an upgrade. And the styly on these things are interchangeable. So I decided to go for the G1042. I have to say the difference in sound was just remarkable. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Um, I've been I've been listening a lot to sort of albums that I've known for years. And you know, as the as the saying goes, the old cliche goes, you hear things that you've never actually sort of heard before in these recordings. Um, when you get a really good stylus so yeah really really pleased to get that i mean if if you can if you can get one 
if you're looking for a good sort of stylus and cartridge i can't recommend these enough but the actual whole deck itself yeah very very pleased and proud to have this one um i got it when my uncle actually sold it um when he he actually only got rid of it because he believe it or not he found a garrard 401 in a back alley which he got restored and that became his deck of choice hence selling this one so uh yeah i think it was right place at the right time and um, when i got hold of it um i've been listening to records for many years but it I, I didn't realize how good they could sound until i got this deck and that kind of got me interested in hi-fi whereas before i was just kind of happy with whatever i had um but this yeah really got me on the upgrade path to leading to all sorts of other good things so my other deck or the second deck at least, is a Lynn Basic. Um, I just fancied a second deck just as a spare, and they're just they're just good things to have. It's like if you're a king guitarist, you wouldn't just have one guitar, would you? So, um, yeah, I thought I'd do that. I wanted something by Lynn, but at the time, I couldn't afford a, a Lynn LP12. That's out of the question. It's probably still out of the question now, to be fair. They, they are so common the Lynn LP 12s, but you know, the prices they go for are just pretty extreme if you ask me. Um, but anyway, considering it's quite a thin deck, it sounds excellent. I think at the time they were trying to compete with the Riga planner three and the project, that kind of market at the time. Uh, these aren't very, very common at all, but if you do see them, they don't go for a huge amount. Um, the mat I've got on here, not the original mat, they, they normally come with a felt mat, but I can't stand felt mats. Um, they're full of static. So this is a cork and rubber compound. Uh, the arm is the stock arm that would have come with it. It is the, the most basic one. Lin Basic Plus. Works fine. Sounds fine to me. I may upgrade it one day. I may notice a difference, but I've always kept this one. So, yeah, there we go. Now the cartridge japanese made if i can get this thing to focus there we go it is a nagaoka mp200 now i used to have a mp110 on this but there was a period where nagaoka and a few of the japanese manufacturers seemed to be selling their gear on ebay direct from japan at incredibly low prices so at that time, it was about six or seven years ago, I took the plunge and I bought it. And I think it was only about £150 at the time. I mean, they go for a lot more now. And it is wonderful sounding. It really does. It's a complete surface noise killer. If you've got sort of, you know, slightly worn records, um, it really does kill any of the kind of crackle, the snaps and the pops outright. And it's got a lovely, well-rounded, detailed sound. So, yeah, very lucky to have that because they, you know, they do cost a bit now. If you're going to if you're going to take the plunge and order one of these, definitely go directly from Japan. There's plenty. Of, there's plenty of um, Japanese eBay sellers that do these. Um, they come highly recommended. So let's go across to the amplifier. We have got a Roxanne Candy. KA1 Mark III. Now, I had my eye on this amplifier for many years before I got it. I only bought it about this time last year. And the only reason I did get it is because the amplifier I had before, which is, was a Marantz PM4001, it just stopped working. One of the channels went and I just didn't deem it viable to get it fixed. I wanted to upgrade. So um, there's loads of these for sale on eBay. And considering they are, their original selling price from you at the time was nine hundred pounds, you can get them for about two to three hundred pounds if you play your cards right. There's there's so many of them. So if if you ever are thinking of upgrading your amplifier, I can't recommend this enough. It has got such a well balanced and detailed sound, lovely and powerful. It's a hundred watts. All the inputs you need. It's got a built in phono input, which which sounds great. Plenty of line ins and line outs, everything you need, headphone socket. I can't recommend these enough. They are just a great, great, fuss free integrated amplifier. The I've got a preamp, 
um, because as you can see, I've got two decks, so I need a separate phono preamp for the other one to go into. And this is just a basic project phono box. I, I can't really say too much about this one, simply because um, it just does what it does. I haven't really compared it to sort of much else. It does the job well, and that is, and that's kind of the end of it, really. So yeah, it's absolutely fine. It's all reliable. Uh, Walrus didn't come with it. That came completely separately. Headphones is a pair of Grado SR225s. Uh, again, I've had these for many, many years. Um, I can't complain about them at all. They're incredibly detailed. Uh, they really are great. The only thing I would say about the Grado range is that they are open backed, which is good because it, it creates a very sort of open and airy sound but it does leak a lot of sound out and in. So it, you couldn't really listen to them with someone in the same room as you, or if you're out and about, especially on things like public transport, they are definitely sort of for indoor use only. But if you want to keep someone who's asleep in the next room happy by not blaring out your speakers or neighbours late at night, these are definitely the way to go. Um, finally, the speakers. I've got a pair of... B&W 685s. Um, again, I've had these for many years, about a decade now. They've never failed me. They sound absolutely fantastic. Uh, so powerful, so detailed, so open, very sort of wide soundstage. Um, previously, I had a pair of Wharfdale Diamonds, um, which were fine, but these just blew them out of the water. They really, really did. Um, I've no real desire to upgrade them, if I'm honest with you. I think if they sort of comped out, I would either try and get them fixed or get them again, quite frankly. So, um, again, I cannot recommend these enough. Absolutely fantastic. So that's it. However, if you think that's over, you're wrong. I've got another system downstairs. So come with me. And we will take a look. OK, I'm into the back room kitchen area. Breakfast bar here where I normally sit and do a lot of my videos. So here we go. The record deck, it's the system deck. Now, can someone do me a favor? The system deck, is it a 2X? Is it an eight? Is it a 210? I wanna think it is a system deck eight, but I know when it comes to Roman numerals, the Roman numeral for eight is VIII, -I -I, not IIX. So I've always been a bit, perplexed at what model this is so i will show you and uh please comment if you know the answer i'm sure someone does um here we've got an acrylic platter an upgrade it's lighter than the standard glass platter the arm that i've got on it is a uh it's a gelco st250 but it's revolver badge now this came actually off a revolver turntable which was a failed project i'm not going to bore you with that that was stressful yeah, I bought one and I, I could not get it working and neither could any professional hi-fi shop. But yeah, great, great arm. And I've got another Naga Oka cartridge. Now these, um, these are absolutely brilliant cartridges. If you're on a little bit of a budget and you fancy upgrading, these are, I always recommend these. If ever, if ever anyone asks a question on Facebook, on YouTube, on forums about what they want to what to upgrade their cartridge to if they haven't you know got a fortune to spend I would always recommend one of these um, they are so detailed um, I used to, I used to have an um, Autophon 2M red and then replaced it with this and this cartridge blew it out of water in terms of detail um, it's a good surface noise killer and yeah it is really is a very very popular and great budget cartridge for good reason. So I can't sort of recommend that enough. Amplifier. We have got a Marantz PM66 SE. And this is the, if I can get this to focus, the KI signature version, which has upgraded components in it. KI stands for the uh, main guy at Marantz, whose name I can never remember or and can never pronounce so i'm going to put his name in a caption at the bottom if 
or what KI stands for. Um, great sounding amp. I did always think when I first got it, it was lacking something. I always kind of couldn't put my finger on it. Um, so I ended up buying an external phono preamp by, um, there's a manufacturer called Tisbury Audio. Now they don't sell externally at all to any sort of hi-fi um, outlets. They just, they sell direct. You can buy it direct from their website if you look them up and they are on eBay. Now this was only 150 pounds. I think they, uh, they raised their price to about 160 now. And it made such an improvement on the sound. It really kind of beefed it up, made it more wide, more detailed. It just ticked all the boxes. So if you fancy a little upgrade or you feel your um, amplifier's lacking, get one of these. Plug it in, plug your turntable into it and plug the component into your auxiliary and see how you get on. There we are, Bluetooth box. If ever I do a little bit of streaming or what have you, if I haven't got time to play a whole record, sometimes I like to listen to the vinyl community at high definition through my speakers. So, yeah, that's always a good thing. And finally, the speakers here, B&W yet again. Uh, this time we've got the DM601s. Uh, they're a little bit of an older model than the 685s that you saw um, upstairs. It's the Series 3 model. Um, but they sound, I'd say, almost as good. They've got that, they've got the sound that I wanted, and they are very, very easy to get. If you look on eBay, Craigslist, whatever you want, any of the classifieds, they are really, really easy to find and not terribly expensive. So, yeah, I do highly recommend that range. So, there it is. That is all the equipment. Thank you. So, there we have it. That's what I've got. That's what I've got to show you. Um, don't want it to seem like any kind of boast. It was literally, I've got an interest in it and I just like to, like I do with my records, I just like to recommend things. Um, I think the, uh, it's safe to say the equipment that I've shown is generally even in sort of, you know, hi-fi press, hi-fi manufacturing circles, it's still regarded as pretty budget. Um, I think, I think everything, a lot of the things that I've bought myself, I've had to really kind of save up for. I mean, it's not, it's not kind of pricey pricey stuff but it's still it you know it still costs um but it but at the same time it's not it's it doesn't cost a fortune you know it is it is achievable um possibly even in these sort of leaner times if you've got a if you've got a bit of spare cash um certainly around so there we are um obviously feel free to let me know what you think if you like any of it disagree with any of it then you know what to do um uh pop your comments, make your comments known. Um, and of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, thank you very much. And I'll see you in another video. Take care.